Hello and welcome. My name is Rich White, and this is the Greenbush Labs podcast. You can get all Greenbush Labs updates and blog posts at labs.greenbush.us. Today I want to review a few of my recent blog posts and then give some updates on the EDUSIM project, which is our virtual classroom and smart board tool. Think of a virtual environment for the classroom and smart board tool that I'm developing using the open source Croquet. Today I want to start with a blog post. It is posted September 9th on the blog. It's the ICANN CEO sees virtual worlds are the future of global commerce. It's a very interesting post. I recommend going and reading it, but it talks about how the uh, current CEO of ICANN sees that uh, virtual worlds like Second Life and those will play a very integral part in the future of how people shop and uh, purchase things. So it's an interesting post. Going up September 10th, have another one, and this is one I've blogged on pretty consistently for several months, but it's about the uh, Spectrum coming up, the Open Spectrum 700 megahertz Spectrum that comes up. They're auctioning in January. That's being left vacant when TV goes digital, and the title is... Will Apple and Google team up to bid on the Spectrum? It's from Business Week. I've blogged on it, kind of covering it a little bit. And just a segment. Two sources tell Business Week that Steve Jobs' company have studied the implications of joining the auction, which is to be held January 16th. The winners will get rights to either Spectrum that analog TV broadcasters are handing back to the government in 2009, giving their mandated move to digital television. So essentially um, discussing the ramifications of, of that. And then what happens when the TV airwaves are the internet airwaves right now, especially in schools. Schools and a lot of organizations spend a lot of time blocking access to certain uh, sites and to certain parts of the internet. Well, when the uh, airwaves are wide open and any device can access them, it's going to be really, really hard to block anything. So, just a few things to ponder. And that kind of dovetails into my September 17th post, uh, when the internet airwaves and low-cost computing would empower students. So, what it what it discusses is when the airwaves, the TV airwaves, are the internet airwaves. And it also gets a little bit into the low-cost computing and how uh, one company sees that by 2009-2010, that uh, laptop hardware and software and things you basically need to connect to the internet, the hardware you could basically get for as little as $40, $50. And then, of course, you've got your open internet on the airwaves, and so you're talking about mobile computing like we've never seen. And then that one also dovetails into a post I have September 19th, kind of going along with the theme. And it's a post that I cover from a uh, research company, ABI Research. It's abiresearch.com. And they discuss the mobile internet devices, and they call them ultra-mobile devices, which are devices that aren't a real, pro a real product type in the market yet, but that they see emerging. They see iPhones as being precursor to these ultra-mobile internet devices. So they call it the whole new class of always-on internet-connected products, collectively termed ultra-mobile devices, will become popular over the next five years. According to a new report from ABI Research, by appealing to a wide range of buyers, they will reach shipments of nearly 95 million units by 2012 and should prove extremely profitable for their market. In other words, what they're saying is uh, a product that doesn't, doesn't even exist yet, the ultra or mobile internet devices, what they call them. By 2012, we'll have reached the same market share as the iPods do now. So there's about 100 million iPods out there in the world now. And they're saying by 2012, there'll be about 95 million ultra mobile internet devices. So that's a pretty significant shift in how consumers will connect to the internet, according to this ABI research. So, And then I have several uh, links from there you can go and uh, the ABI research link and the gizmag.com link that discusses it a little bit. And really, I would say three themes that are pretty consistent within this blog over the past four or five months are one, the spectrum coming up and what that'll do for schools, education, and consumers in general. The second is mobile media and the mobile media devices, which these uh, ultra mobile devices is considered a part of. We see, especially through Greenbush, is that's going to be a very future oriented technology that Greenbush can use to really expand how people access our services. And the other are virtual environments when you talk about the second lives, how people can, can meet up, collaborate, and through this EDUSIM product, this EDUSIM project and learn. So really we see the EDUSIMP project uh, reaching the kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade areas. Then we'll have the teen grid where we can explore more into the middle school and high school. And then when, as we get the professional years and the teachers, we've got our main grid island. 
So we pretty much have every demographic and every segment covered in, in the virtual environment space as well. So exciting developments. And then finally, I wanted to discuss some updates of the EdgeSim project. Have updated if you want to go to EdgeSim, edusim.greenbush.us to get the latest work that I've put together here. It uh, basically trying to make it a little more smart board friendly so that as educators decide they want to experiment with virtual environments in the classroom and allow students to get up on the smart board and build, design, create things right there from the smart board. Going to make that a, a little bit more easy to do, hopefully with this new uh, interface here. So you can go to edusim.greenbush.us and get that. It's the new, uh, the new interface that I've got. Also working on building several new island sims that you can get. Um, one will be a math island sim. One will be a, just an orientation to uh, the edges sim so that you'll get the island. You'll go in there and you can see how you will build things, how you can import things, and how you can use it in your class. Um, in terms of bringing in images, bringing in audio, bringing in video, and then collaborating, because really the Edge Sim also allows for multiple people to connect to the same island, almost like Second Life, a peer-to-peer -peer Second Life type application uh, built on Croquet. So you will definitely hear more about that as time goes. So to wrap up, go to labs.greenbush.us, get more information about some of the things that we're working on, uh, if you want to learn more about some of the ultra mobile media devices and the ABI research stuff, some of the virtual environment stuff we're working on, um, read up a little bit more on the spectrum and the impact we think that's going to have on education. The three real emerging things here in the future for schools and businesses in general. Go check that out and stay tuned. Stay tuned to the podcast. Stay tuned to the blog. And I will talk to you later.